Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, presentation. Um, I don't, ah, I do see one question, great. Um, so this is one by Tristan Bro, And the question is, to what extent would noise and experimentally measured single molecule data limit the reconstruction of the free energy surface? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, um, so, so we, we've applied it sort of in the limit case of sort of um, infinitesimal time resolution and of course no noise. Um, and so applying it to, to real experimental data, absolutely you have to deal with the fact that not only do you have noise, but you have fine time resolution. Um, so the, the, the theorem, so Tarkin's theorem, um, tells you that, that no, no matter what your time resolution is, it, it should work. Um, it just need, means that you need more data. So in practice, whether we can get enough data to do that, that's not clear. You can imagine that you could miss important fast transitions if you don't have fast enough sampling rate. With noise, that's a trickier one. So um, the, the big problem with noise is that what can actually happen is with sufficient noise, you can sort of short circuit your manifold. So you sort of fill up your manifold erroneously. You don't sort of adhere to the true, uh, the, the true low dimensional projection. So, um, so what we're trying to do is see if we can place some empirical bounds on it by actually just messing up our MD trajectories to see how well we do, and then trying to supplement that with some analytics to see if we can actually put, place some, uh, some, some sort of semi-rigorous bounds on the, on the noise thresholds. Yeah, very good question. Obviously very important for applying this in, in reality. Uh, maybe I can ask a follow-up question then. So if you're missing some important transition in your time series, do you, are you then completely off because you don't have this topology link anymore or is this not an issue? So I, I think uh, you're going to be able to sort of capture the metastable basins. And so what you may miss is the, the, the actually catching it in the act of doing something interesting sort of moving between the two basins so I, I believe that you're going to be able to sort of map out the topology correctly you just may not be able to sort of fill in the gaps between the interesting metastable basins and not often those types of motions and mechanisms are the things that we're actually most interesting in um, so it sort of remains to be seen how, how well we can we can do with it okay um, I don't see any raised hands and actually we're um, perfectly on time. Um, ah, there, oh, there is another question. Sorry, I almost uh, overlooked it. So there is one by the user Senka. Um, is there any physical explanation of tau, the time delay, to the motion of protein chain movement? Um, so so Tagen's theorem says that the, the approach should work for any tau. Um, when you have infinite data, that's certainly true. We're never in that regime. And so it turns out that it's good, good practice sort of tune tau and the rule of thumb is you want tau to be equal approximately to your decorrelation time. And so you don't want it to be too short because then you're not getting any new information between sub 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 subsequent observations. You don't want it to be too long because then you're missing out on information. So we usually do sort of a mutual information plot or, a, or an autocorrelation plot and look for sort of the, uh, the, the first decay time in that. And that, that provides sort of a good rule of thumb for setting it in practice. All right. I hope this, yeah. Thank you very much. I don't see any further questions.